everyone, my name is Tim Brown, and today I want to cover a volunteer management system, or VMS, called Volunteer Hub. A volunteer Hub is a great application for managing volunteers because it enables you to manage a wide range of volunteers. You know, volunteers, for example, who may help out with events, or volunteers that need specialized training as in, say, docent volunteers, or volunteers that are at multiple different sites or locations. Volunteer Hub is a nice centralized way to do this. So what I'm going to do is just walk you through the basic features highlighting the latest Admin 2.0 version. Once you set up an account with Volunteer Hub, your homepage will look like this. You can add a logo in the top left corner, a background image, and header information describing your organization and or landing page. At the top right, you can sign in or create an account. Here is the sign-in page. The information on this page can be customized to provide specific information for your volunteers. You can find this section in Settings under Landing Pages. This is the new layout for the Admin 2.0 version of Volunteer Hub. This is what you will see when you click on the Admin button on the default home page. The Admin section can only be seen by administrators and not volunteers. Here is a comparison of Admin 2.0 on the left and Admin 1.0 on the right. As you can see, the latest version has a cleaner user interface that makes it a lot easier and quicker to navigate the various menu options. I will focus on Admin 2.0 from here on out. This is the first screen you will see when you enter the Admin section of Volunteer Hub. On the left is a list of upcoming events that have already been scheduled. On the right is a news feed that contains recent updates from Volunteer Hub support staff. The hamburger menu at the top left is where you can access the new menu options in Tile View. This menu can be accessed from most pages. Volunteer Hub provides two ways to structure your volunteers, event groups and user groups. User groups identify who your volunteers are, and event groups identify what they will do. User groups enable you to classify volunteers by group to coincide with your institutional needs. You can create different types of volunteers, say like docents, event volunteers, greeters, etc. You can create a volunteer approval process. So each user group becomes each step of the process and you can add and or remove names accordingly. You can create training prerequisites as well and you can communicate to users with specific skill sets if you want to arrange them that way. You can reserve an entire event for a business or a community group and with this granular process you can also create more detailed customized reports. These examples of user groups can best be accomplished by setting up a hierarchy of categories. The hierarchy will help with creating reports that are specific to the data that you want to collect and allow you to customize messages for specific groups. For example, if you have a user group from an outside organization like a church, you want to make sure that the hierarchy you set up is independent of other parent groups that are not connected to the volunteer functions associated with that group. This will give you the option to set up events, send messages, and issue reports that are specific to that user group or organization. Event groups are distinguished from user groups because they are associated with a specific event. In other words, event groups help to identify what each user group will be assigned to do for that event. By selecting the ellipses icon or three dots, you can quickly add event subgroups to outline specific duties. For example, you can organize volunteers by task where they can sign up for registration, set up, or clean up, or you can create multiple time slots for an event. For example, morning, afternoon, and evening shifts. And just like user groups, you want to make sure that the event groups are added to the appropriate parent group. The events tab is used to set up an event. The event schedule is used to list all volunteer opportunities, whether it's a school tour or ticketed event. Inside the events tab, you can set up a one-time event or a recurring event. The latter is an event that is offered on a routine basis, for example, every day at a specific time. When creating a one-time event, you add an event name, description, and event group. This parent group will enable you to communicate with only those user group members who are participating in that event. The event group will also be very useful when you set up landing pages later on. The recurrence master follows a similar process. Each item in a recurrent master enables you to record hours, communicate with users by SMS or email, or manually register a user. Each item in a recurrent master is also called an instance. Instances are like events 
within an event. For example, an event attendant can sign up for a specific shift and or specific assignments during that shift. Instances can also be set up using different patterns to include daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly occurrences. Landing pages enable you to set up specific schedules and content for specific user groups. For example, if you have behind the scene volunteers, you can set up a landing page just for them. Landing pages require behaviors that identify event groups and user groups associated with that page. This will enable you to control the events that you want listed on any given landing page. You can use landing pages for a wide variety of things like training schedules. Each page comes with basic HTML functions for adjusting fonts and adding hyperlinks. Here's an example of a landing page for visitor experience volunteers. In this example, volunteer shifts is set up as the event group. When the All Events tab is selected, only events under Volunteer Shifts will appear as volunteer opportunities. Volunteers can bookmark the page to access these opportunities more readily. Volunteers can select the Sign Up button to register for an event assignment. They will then be asked to confirm their profile information or provide additional feedback. Each volunteer will have access to the My Schedule tab located at the login homepage. This page will display a list of their registered events in list view or calendar view. Reports can be pulled from seven different menu options including birthdays, event participation by event, event participation by user, event summary, last user activity, multi-event sign-in sheet, and user group membership. You can also go to each individual account to find a list of events attended and total hours completed. Admin 2.0 also makes it very easy to search for items rather than scroll through an entire menu listing. The keyword feature is also built into the navigation component of Admin 2.0, which operates as a filtering system. You can X out the filters to return to the main menu. You can also click on the filter icon to fine tune your search options. And finally, volunteer hours can be recorded seamlessly by using the sign in kiosk feature. Here, users can sign in with their username and the hours for their assignment are submitted automatically. This can be set up on a computer or tablet and made available at the Visitor Information Desk or Volunteer Room. And that is my brief overview of Volunteer Hub Admin 2.0. As you can see, Volunteer Hub can be used as a centralized management tool for managing a wide range of volunteers, whether they are coming in for a one-time event, coming in every day, or coming in for specialized training. My name is Tim Brown, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Tim B's Tech Talk. Check me out next time.